Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black and green or Sultai colored self mill deck with Glarb, Calamities Augur, a 3 mana 2-4 with Death Touch, saying we can look at the top card of our library at any time and both play lands as well as cast spells with mana value 4 or greater from the top of our library. And Glarb can also tap to Surveil 2, so that's a great way to fill the graveyard to enable some of our synergies, as well as a way to set up the top of our deck so we can play those lands and cast those spells so we can accumulate card advantage. And then some of the cards we want to cast off the top with Glarb include a lot of creatures that actually get a discount for having more creatures in our graveyard. So despite Glarb requiring mana value 4 or greater, we can still potentially cast a Husk Burster Swarm for just a single black mana if we have 7 or more creatures in our graveyard or in exile. So it also tracks our adventure creatures like the Cruel Somnophage, so that's also quite synergistic. And then a 6-6 six -six with Menace and Death Touch, so it does beat down pretty hard, especially if we can get it down on the cheap. And then the Writhing Necromance is one cheaper, doesn't track creatures in exile, just a 5-5 with Death Touch. And the Hollow Marauder is very similar, a 4-2 Flyer. When it enters we can make the opponent discard a card, and if they didn't discard a card with mana value 4 or greater, we also get to draw a card, so that can also trigger quite often. And then we also have a removal spell we can play off the top with Glarb. Overwhelming Remorse also gets a discount for each creature card in our graveyard, so we can potentially cast it for just a single black mana, exiling an opposing creature or planeswalker. And then taking a look at the early game of the deck, we have four copies of Annoying Vermin, perfect to get in the way of a Heartfire Hero or a Cacophony Scamp. When it dies, can also give a creature minus one, minus one until end of turn, maybe taking those out without taking too much damage. And we can target ourselves when it enters to mill for two to start filling the graveyard, hopefully finding lots of creatures. Then there's the Blanchwood Prowler, which will mill three cards when it enters, and if we find a land we can put it in hand, if not we can put a plus one counter on the Prowler, it's another way to start milling ourselves. And then the Cruel Summon of Ages Adventure is another solid turn two play, letting us mill for four, so that can also put more creatures in graveyard to start giving us a bigger discount on our top end threats. And as you can see, every non-land card in the deck outside of Overwhelming Remorse is a creature, so we're pretty likely to hit a few of those. And then when we eventually cast the Summon of Page, it will have power and toughness each equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards so it also tracks the opponent's graveyard and as we mentioned if we have this in exile in our adventure zone it can also discount a husk burster swarm for what it's worth and then a Souls of the Lost we can occasionally also cast on turn 2. We do need to either discard a card or sacrifice a permanent as an additional cost, although discarding a card can be an advantage as a way to give us another discount by discarding a creature. can also sacrifice a land in the late game if we don't want to sacrifice a creature, for instance. And we can also maybe sacrifice a Gnawing Vermin, which can then die and give an opposing creature minus 1, minus 1. So that's another neat synergy. And then the Souls of the Lost will have power and toughness equal to the number of permanent cards in our graveyard and toughness plus one. So this also tracks our lands in graveyard, so it's often going to be much bigger than a Cruel Somnophage or than an Urborg Lurgoyf, which is also only going to track creatures in our graveyard, but we can also kick it when we cast Lurgoyf for either blue and or black mana, milling three each time. So this can potentially mill for six if we cast it for four mana, but also a good three mana play just to mill for three and start filling the graveyard some more. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up our entire deck. The plan is simple, fill the graveyard and then get a lot of value of Glarb and start casting huge monsters for just one or two mana and to maybe activate our Restless Reef, another nice creature land that can mill for four when it attacks, so it can also target ourselves with it. And then we've got a mix of Fast Lands, Botanical Sanctum, Blooming Marsh, and Dark Slick Shores, as well as a couple Pain Lands with the Underground River, Alanor Wastes, and Yavimaya Coast. And then we've got a couple Basics in case we need to search this up, one of each as well as a couple surveil lands which are also good to play early to just help uh, put more cards in our graveyard with the mortuary or with the undercity sewers. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that is maybe a bit light on the self mill. Just have annoying vermin. So I think we're a bit too light on the enablers here. This is missing green mana for Glarb, but uh, we can get double Somnophage going in the meantime. One Glarb can go. Alright, so just gonna mill myself. 
next turn play Mortuary, plus maybe Somnophage, or we can mill once again. And then turn after play Glarb. We only milled one creature so far, so not the best hit. Although Souls of the Lost will still be large. Kind of into the idea of uh, playing the Somnophage to maybe give them a target for removal. Although then again, I don't want to play Somnophage if it can still die to a cutdown, which currently it can. So maybe I do just keep milling. And then make them use their go for the throat on Somnophage, so Souls of the Lost can maybe stick around. Opponent's got a Ren and a Realm Breaker. Also a way to mill yourself, although double green's pretty rough on our mana base, so we wouldn't really be able to support it. We do see Deep Cavern Bats. Deep is Betrayal, so they do have a discard theme. Alright, so this turn, if I just tap out for Glarb, doesn't really feel great, since it likely gets removed, but it does use up all my mana. And then if it dies, we'll be able to maybe double spell next turn. And then I still get to play a land, so that's nice. Marauder can go to the graveyard. And we've got another one on top. So we'll see if Glarb survives. Otherwise we'll be able to play a Swarm with a Necromace. Liliana was kind of the worst case since it'll stick around afterwards. You go. But yeah, I can play Marauder, which will make the opponents discard a card. And can maybe fly over an opposing blocker. Still trades for Aklazots. And then play the Swarm, which has Menace. Right, we actually got to draw a card here. Still tempted to play the Swarm. Could also try and play Prowler, hoping to find an untapped black source, and then I can still play Swarm afterwards. But we also have to be prepared for Aklazots coming down next turn. So Swarm would be probably the best way to attack past it. And then if Liliana pluses, Prowler can go at this point. Opponent had a tapped land, so no Aklazots, but an Assassin's Trophy. Should have a land left to search up. Make it forest. Now the Prowler is useful to maybe sacrificing it to Liliana's minus ability. We all have things we'd rather. So I could keep it. Discard the Souls of the Lost, which, while large, still just dies to most removal spells. Although I can also sacrifice a permanent to the Souls. So I think I still get rid of the Prowler here. And then we can't forget about Somnophage as an extra threat we can play from Exile once we're empty-handed. Cottage Animates can also exile cards from our graveyard. So our opponent is offering the trade, but we probably want to finish off Liliana now. Or maybe they still have a removal spell left, Assassin's Trophy number two. Alright, got one basic left. And a Gnawing Vermin is perfect to sacrifice to a Liliana, potentially. So how many spells can I cast? I'm kind of limited in my black mana, so I can cast four spells at most. Still want to mill myself. Milling two more Vermins. And then... Yeah, I want to play Souls, sacking a land. I should actually sacrifice my island here. Play Necromass and a Somnophage. Alright, that's a lot of stuff. We're empty handed, so we don't care about Liliana's plus ability. And we can sacrifice Vermin to the minus. And we are potentially threatening lethal in a single attack. Opponent 
opponent's going to animate uh, Lanar Wastes. But yeah, at this point, if they play Aklazots, it's uh, Trump blocking, and they may still not survive. Another Souls of the Lost isn't bad. So, yeah, at this point, if I send a large one face and Necromass at Ren, that's probably the best. Opponent has to jump anyway. And I don't think there's a board wipe I'm too worried about. But I could keep Summon of Age in exile if we don't want to overextend too much. Should still have plenty to cross the finish line next turn. On the off chance that they have a cover up. Our claws also is back, but it's tapped, so opponent seems in trouble. They did find another trophy. Well, we're out of basics now. But opponent still taking a lethal and overwhelming remorse, also another answer to Aklazot. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Some early enablers with double prowler. And then Lurgoiv and Somnophage, both enablers as well as threats. Facing a red aggro. So yeah, presenting a large blocker as soon as possible is kind of our goal in this matchup. And we milled three creatures. Good in the sense that we will grow our creatures, but bad in the sense that we might miss our land drop next turn. Yeah, I mean, I will block. Force them to use that initial pump spell. Polonius Rage. Not as bad as a Monstrous Rage would have been, since we still trade. And it puts an extra creature in Graveyard for us. Alright, I think I gotta play another Prowler. And then there's a chance I get a couple more creatures in Graveyard and hit a land. I guess it's not gonna be enough to play a Swarm afterwards. Because I would need to mill three creatures, but then I'm not gonna get a land. Yeah, what's the alternative? Make a... 5-5 five, five, Somnophage, I guess isn't bad. Just to have a blocker for next turn. And then we can play Prowler next turn. Challenger we can block. Opponent's gonna hang back. And we found a land. Still gonna play Prowler first, I think. Or I could play Lurgoif kicked once. Milling three cards. Yeah, that's maybe not so bad. Alright, and then... I think one turn I still hang back, and then next turn I can consider attacking. Once we get a swarm down. I am worried about flying creatures. But they don't seem to have any slick shots for now at least. And we did hit a land drop, so... Could attack Somnophage, play Swarm. Or I could play Prowler. If I mill two creatures, I still get to play Swarm. Or if I mill one creature and find an untapped land, that could still work. Alright, perfect. And I can play Double Swarm, in fact. So I don't mind attacking with both my creatures. That way we can present lethal next turn. But yeah, we could still potentially die out of nowhere. Opponent's got a shock. Triggers prowess, that's fine. So if they've burned together, they can deal 4 damage while triggering challenger. 
So yeah, if the Valiant trigger revealed something like a Monstrous Rage, they would have gotten very close to burning me out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's probably fine. Mill with Somnophage on 2, maybe kick Lurgoyf on 3, opponent on presumably green-white rabbits. So they can build a very impressive board pretty quickly. And maybe go wide to ignore our huge creatures. So this may be a more difficult matchup. I think I still like Somnophage over Prowler. Is that true? Yeah, I don't think I'm desperate to hit more land drops. Even though we could have found a fast land as our third land drop. So, just one creature in graveyard at the moment. Fall Patch Recruit will punish us for casting an overwhelming remorse. So, yeah, I like uh, Lorgoif here. And we mill two creatures, so 3-4 can maybe hold off an attack now. And then next turn we can potentially keep milling with either Prowler or another Somnophage while deploying one of them. Opponents can make three one ones. Can they convoke a Knight Errant as well? They do not. Okay, so stick to the plan, I suppose. Mill with Somnophage and play one. And then I can probably tap my mana so I don't take damage. I'll have to do it myself. Alright. So we've got some decent blockers, but uh, we'll see if our opponent can go wide enough to ignore them. Case of the Gateway Express would be pretty good too here. It's gonna be another paw patch. So, I don't think I'm casting my Overwhelming Remorse for quite some time. Alright, Marauder is a way to fly over, so can uh, start there, see what else we draw. Could Surveil first, but we'll save that for afterwards. Opponent discards a land, can play a 1 mana Swarm now. Which, uh, yeah, I guess is reasonable. And then still play Prowler. Could also just play both Somnophage and Swarm. And get more stuff on the board. And then next turn we can potentially grow our creatures a bit more to consider attacking on the ground. And another Paw Patch Recruit. Yeah, a Remorse would now give the opponent 6 plus 1 counters. So it doesn't seem worth it. But yeah, opponent's unable to attack on the ground, and Glarp was an awesome top deck. So we'll start there. And can play the Sewers to get rid of Prowler. Or I can play Prowler and then maybe play a land off the top. Playing Prowler here could still grow Somnophage and Lurgoif. Um, I think I go for Sewers here. And then Mortuary on top, we can maybe find with the Prowler. So I can play it next turn. And Sanctum on top. Alright, so am I in a position to attack with like an 8-8 here? What if our opponent attacks with everyone next turn? That is potentially... A decent amount of damage. So yeah, Marauder certainly attacks. I think I do get in with maybe a Lorgoif. And we're happy to see them chump. Warren Guard is fine. They can activate two villages. All right, then let's have more fun with Glarb. Oh, yes. And then Lurgoyf. I can either surveil with Mortuary or with Glarb's ability. I think we'll use Glarb here. Uh, 
And then vermin I can get rid of. And draw another card with Marauder. And then we can attack. Lurgoif Marauder is probably it. And then next turn I can consider attacking with multiple giant creatures. Still want to give the opponent a little bit of respect in case they find an Anthem effect to pump their team. Especially thinking of the one with Offspring. Although we can take one of them out. And with all these Paw Patch recruits, that's still kind of sketchy. And our opponent scoops it up, Glarb providing too much value. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We are probably keeping. Haven't decided yet what to do on turn two. Could already play Souls discarding a creature. Since I kind of want to wait to kick my Lurgoyf at least once. So maybe for now it's Souls discarding against blue-green. Swarm is going to be a bit more expensive, but uh, Menace could be useful. Although against blue-green, Death Touch by itself might be good enough. So maybe I play the uh, Souls discarding Huskbreaker Swarm. Just to put an initial creature in Graveyard. And Somnophage was a good draw. So I can either play a kick Lurgoyf, or I can just adventure the Somnophage and then next turn doubly kick a Lurgoyf, for instance. I think just playing Lurgoyf now and then next turn both milling and casting Somnophage is going to be a little bit more efficient. So we'll try that. And we hit three creatures. So we've got a pair of four fives. And our opponent's going to use the Whale to put Souls back on top. That is somewhat annoying since uh, I'll have to discard or sacrifice a permanent to it again. So maybe I should just get rid of it instead of redrawing. Although at some point I can also just sacrifice a land to the Souls. I'll put it on the bottom for now. Opponent a Teamer deck, so Teamer ramp it seems. So you can expect them to go over the top with Roxanne, Bonnie, and eventually maybe copying some of our stuff as well. For now, stick to the plan of Somnophage. Hit for five. And cast a Somnophage. At least our creatures are large enough to survive most burn spells. Another Somnophage we will adventure. Also can't forget about our creature land, Restless Reef, which can get busy next turn. Let's act for 16, so this is lethal unless they have another whale. And yeah, her opponent packs it in. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. Prowler to hopefully mill lots of creatures. Souls of the Lost can also maybe discard to put an extra creature in Graveyard. Uh, let's see what we're up against. Blue-black. Alright, could really use a land here. And we found one, in fact we found three. And then Dark Slick Shores could be decent here, although if I draw another fast land I might regret it. Yeah, then again, we do want to maximize our black sources, because we might get to a turn where we can cast multiple one-mana copies of Writhing Necromace. And then I wouldn't be able to cast those with a Yavimaya Coast. Opponent with a Sleep Cursed Fairy, so they're either on blue-black fairies, which would make the most sense, or on a dedicated Sleep Cursed Fairy combo deck with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. We found Glarb, that's nice. Could still be convinced to play Lurgoyf Kicked here, and then next turn play Glarb when I can maybe play a land of the top. Hit 
Although I suppose that if our opponents got a cut down in hand, they can maybe take out Lurgoyf uh, in response to the trigger. So that's still a reason to play Glarb. And yeah, we do see the cut down on Prowler now. So we'll see how that plays out. Another Glarb on top. So we're hoping there's a land next. Opponent now answers Glarb. So we don't know what's next, but I'm gonna play Glarb and find out. It's gonna be a Marauder, so no land for us this turn, sadly. The fairy's about to untap. And Cavern naming Phyrexian, so that implies maybe a Shieldred. Okay, activate Glarb to get rid of our third Glarb to hopefully hit some land drops. And another land on top. So now we've got some options. Maybe just Lurgoyf doubly kicked is the way to go. And then next turn I can unload lots of cheap spells, assuming this resolves. And now as a 3-4, it does not die to a cut down. That point is going to counter with Spell Stutter, so they are indeed a dedicated fairy deck. And Sleep Curse can now start attacking. At least we've got Marauder to get in the way of it. And Gix can draw them an extra card right away. So we may need to use our Overwhelming Remorse. I do get to untap. A land of the top's nice. Another land I can surveil away. Or I could leave Glarb back. So if they counter the Remorse, they're not countering Marauders, so that still works out. So yeah, I think I'm fine to surveil. And then Swarm I can keep on top. Although it's going to be a little pricey to cast right now. So maybe I do still put it in Graveyard to discount my other spells. And Summon of Age I cannot cast off the top. So if I cast Souls discarding a creature, I can play the other creatures for one mana. Which might be worth doing here. That way I can cast everything in hand at the moment. And it's also just a large creature the opponent will have to deal with. So now let's maybe try Overwhelming Remorse on Gix. Although I could also keep that one at instant speed. Because the card I really want to resolve is a Marauder. I guess I can give them a Necromace. My opponent is going to Spell Stutter, perfect. So now I get to resolve Marauder. And then I can either Remorse now or wait for the opponent to play their turn out. My opponent discarded another Gig, so now I feel better about taking out the one in play. Before they can maybe counter my removal spell. And then Marauder is happy to trade for Sleep Cursed Fairy. Especially now that they have a payoff for other fairies in play. And then now we can start unloading all these huge creatures. So yeah, Glarb is doing some work for us. How about a one mana Necromance for free? And then now I can still play a Lurgoyf, maybe only kicked once. Or I can always surveil with Glarb. Restless Reef wouldn't be a bad land to draw necessarily. But uh, may I go kicked once. So I can still maybe play more creatures of the top. I like another Necromace. And then I guess I'll surveil to maybe find another one. Prowler I don't need. Alright, and hit you for 16. So a few ways we could have sequenced there. But I think we're in decent shape. Opponent pretty much needs a board wipe to reset everything. Which they might have. But they are at 2. Every creature we draw now is going to be lethal. So that was maybe a reason to keep... The creature land on top. Ego Drain makes me discard my Somnophage, go for the throat, my 1718, and then die to the rest. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. 
bit light on the early enablers, perhaps, but surveilling helps. And then, yeah, I guess I could keep Mortuary as another way to surveil next turn. Or I could play Souls just to get it out there. And then I would have to discard a card to it. Now let's keep the Mortuary and then play that next turn. Could have also been digging for some uh, author cheap enabler, I suppose. And then now I don't need Dark Slick Shores opponent on the red aggro with Demonic Ruckus. So, especially if they have flying creatures like Slick Shots, they can just fly over. And it's gonna take a while to enable the Remorse, but opponent not going for the Ruckus right away, maybe afraid of a cutdown. So, yeah, we get to play Glarb as a 2-4 Death Touch. It is a reasonable blocker. So that might incentivize the opponent to put the Ruckus on Challenger to give it Menace. And we're hoping to fill the graveyard as quickly as possible to cast a cheap Remorse and play a large Souls of the Lost. Alright, Manifold Mouse into Ruckus. So this Challenger is going to hit quite hard. They also found a land with Valiant. So can give it Double Strike and hit me for 8. And they seem to have a Monstrous Rage as well. Well, all of a sudden we're taking 16, we're at 2. So, yeah, it's not looking great. Lurgoif, I cannot cast off the top. Question is, can I afford to surveil and not have the 2-4 blocker? What I could do is play Souls of the Lost discarding Glarb, pass with 2 mana available, and then block with Glarb, Surveil, hoping to mill more creatures, and then cast a uh, cheap Overwhelming Remorse, potentially. I think that's our plan. I would need to mill two creatures for that to work. So if the card underneath Lurgoif is not another creature, we wouldn't be able to cast a Remorse. But it's worth a try. All right, slick shot probably means we die either way. Their opponent triggers Valiant again. They found a Swiss spear. So yeah, we can block Manifold Mouse, and then our opponent cannot have any way to enable the slick shot. Plus, we still need to mill two creatures, which we actually did. Could also see a Remorse on top of the deck we can cast. But yeah, opponent's got a shock, so we were dead in uh, a lot of different ways. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. The early vermin to help against aggro while filling the graveyard, hopefully hitting some creatures. Turn two. Maybe play Souls, could also sacrifice the Vermin to it. And then hope that we've drawn a third land for Lurgoif by then. And milled one creature at least. Opponent with a Vine Stalk. Okay, so stick to the plan. Could also discard a creature from hand. So that's a choice we can make. But I don't think the Vermin's going to be super helpful against a blue-green deck, necessarily. And it still puts an extra creature and permanent in the graveyard. And then if I don't draw land, I could be convinced to play another Souls next turn. But uh, now Lurgoif looks better. Milled two creatures. So we've got a 6-7 and a 4-5. Opponent using the Whale to put souls back on top. Don't think I want to redraw it. Well, we've seen this exact matchup before, and our opponent struggled to deal with our large creatures. So I'm hoping this is a similar situation. Lurgoif attacks, and then probably go for Marauder now. This one they could maybe take out with a cheaper burn spell, but it's still a nice 2 for 1. 
opponent's gonna draw and discard. They didn't have double blue to actually counter the Marauder. So maybe a slightly different build of the uh, team or ramp deck. Now an ill-timed explosion could still wipe our board if they have an expensive enough creature or card to discard. Which may be the case here, as they already discarded a Chandra. But that's just gonna set up our Swarm and Souls to come down for cheaper. And uh, can play Prowler first, pretty likely to either mill a creature or find a land. Or both. And then a Souls of the Lost is going to be pretty hard for the opponent to remove with their damage-based answers. Double Cornucopia. And Glarb wasn't bad either. Could play Glarb in the hopes of having an untapped land on top, and then I can still play Souls of the Lost. Yeah, let's try it. And then now I don't mind just sacrificing a permanent. Could make it a land, could also attack and then sack the Prowler. Maybe that's still better here, since I could use the extra mana if we do get to untap with Glarb. And I don't think the one extra damage from Prowler is going to matter. Alright, so we've got an 11-12 Souls of the Lost. Got a removal spell in hand. So, ill-timed explosion is not going to do it. Frillback can gain them some life and exile our graveyard. So, wow, that's actually pretty brutal for us. Yeah, exiling our graveyard. We'll answer our Souls of the Lost quite nicely. Still we'll have one toughness at least. So we can try to fill the graveyard once again. We can start by activating Glarb. And get rid of these two. Surveil. And then I have to do some math here. So currently have one creature in graveyard. So I won't be able to cast the uh, Marauder, so may as well put it in the graveyard then. And then we can still attack for 9. Could use Remorse on the Frill back, but may as well wait now. Okay, well, opponent had kind of the perfect answer in Frill back in the main deck, usually don't see it there. But I think we'll still be alright. Carnosaur. Pretty good too. What does it find? A doppelgang. That one's awkward to reveal, but they can cast it next turn. Luckily for us, there won't be a next turn as we can just remorse Carnosaur and then attack for the win. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand against aggro, got some enablers. So, yeah, definitely a keeper. Painless mana base as well. And we milled the creature. So we're off to a promising start. Let's see what we're up against. Mountain and Heartfire Hero. So yeah, Gnawing Vermin doesn't mind. For now, still probably on Somnophage over Souls. Milling three creatures. All right, so we're kind of doing it. I guess what I could have considered doing is just casting souls, sacking vermin to immediately take out the Heartfire Hero. Maybe that was actually the better play. So I don't want to incentivize them to pump Heartfire Hero this turn if I can avoid it. So I'll just take it. Their opponent's going to probably pump it anyway. Yeah, Dreadmaw's Ire. So, yeah, maybe missed an opportunity there to take out the Heartfire Hero. But uh, either way, we get to play a Writhing Necromass if we'd like. And then next turn, I can double spell Somnophage and Souls of the Lost. And then Necromass can trade for their creature. Slick Shot Show Off is a concern, since that can still fly over to kill us. 
and another heart fire so we can take that one out with souls of the lost and we found a marauder so that can get in front of the slick shot we can see what we draw off uh, marauder first So yeah, if I attack right now, I guess I would still have a Souls on defense. And I do want to start pressuring my opponents. And then by making them discard, they're also less likely to combo off with a Slick Shot to kill us. And we'll get to draw cards since our opponent's not playing cards with mana value 4 or greater. So yeah, I could have played it slightly differently with a turn 2 Souls. But this seems to be working out alright. Two cards in hand for our opponent. So how do we die if they go Monstrous Rage plus Cell Sword on Hardfire Hero? If I don't block it, they would kill us. So I think we just block it and that should cut off most of their outs. It's going to be a Bane Splitter at this point on Swiss Spear maybe. They could still go for Hardfire Hero since it'll trigger Valiant and then deal more damage on the way out. But yeah, we fall to 9, 2 more from Hardfire at 7. So we're not dead to a Cell Sword. There's a chance we can attack for lethal next turn. And Glarb the draw, always fun. Yeah, if I play Glarb, that's maybe a little bit risky. If I take a damage of Yavimaya Coast to keep Black Mana untapped. So let's just surveil with Sewers, see what's up. And Blooming Marsh can go Growing Souls, so we're still only attacking for 14. And then I can play Somnophage. And just attack with souls, keeping two blockers back. Alright, now there are still combinations that kill me if they have Soul Sword plus a pump spell. But our opponent doesn't have it, and explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a Keeper. A little bit slow out of the gates. But Vermin can maybe help out against Aggro. And then Glarb's going to be a great setup card to fill the graveyard and cast things off the top. Well, let's see what we're facing. A red-white. And this looks like the controlling tokens deck, which, I'll be honest, is probably our worst matchup. Any deck packing cards like Sunfall is going to be rough. Since it kind of ignores how large our creatures are, unlike damage-based removal spells. Vermin does not mill any creatures either, so we're not off to a stellar start. But mainly it's the matchup I'm worried about. So we'll hit for one. Play Glarb, which at least doesn't die to Lightning Helix. Opponent actually using Get Lost on the Vermin. So that implies that maybe a Lockdown is in their hands to clean up the map tokens. Alright, I guess we'll play Glarb then. land on top. They might have more copies of a Get Lost and they didn't mind casting one there. All right, Soul Partition Glarb, so at least we will get it back eventually. For now, I guess Souls can also sacrifice a map, even though it doesn't fill the graveyard for me. And then I can go exploring. So, 3 toughness, not ideal. Can still die to an opposing Lightning Helix, which should usually avoids. The next turn I can replay Glarb, but I will be tapped out. So, opponents got their Forge online now. Great in combination with Caretaker's Talent. Well, I don't have much of a choice here. I guess I could attack with the Restless Reef. Maybe that's better, actually. I'll get to mill myself. And then grow the Soul of the Lost. Alright, just the one creature, but lands are still good for souls. So our opponent's now at 10. They kind of need to answer the souls on the board. And Lockdown will do it. And now we've got the opportunity to maybe deploy Glarb and play a land of the top right away.
Yeah, I think that's all right. Okay. So still kind of low on creatures and graveyard. These are still very expensive. But uh, yeah, all in all, opponents down to one card in hand. They didn't find their card draw engine. And we might be able to beat one copy of Sunfall if we maneuver carefully. So could have been in a much worse position. And yeah, play Marauder off the top. That's appealing, even though I could potentially put more creatures in graveyard first and then play the one from hand on the cheap and then just present lethal next turn. Yeah, I guess in this case that might be worth it. Two creatures in graveyard and then another one on top, so we got rewarded. Make them discard and our opponent had a land left. A vermin I can play and then that'll discount my author spells, hopefully. Two creatures, perfect. And then now, probably go for Swarm. So opponent could still top deck a Sunfall, but then we'll get back on the board right away. I guess I hadn't played a land yet either. So I could play another creature out, but we might already have enough. Especially with our creature land, so yeah, we'll let them uh, take their turn. And Squintorius is unlikely to save them. Ponon discovers a Lightning Helix, takes out Marauder. Ponon does gain a bit of life back. But with our creature lands, 10, 11, 13 damage. I guess we're a little bit short now. All right, so... Playing out the extra threats would have worked out. So now we do have to be a little bit careful with the Orbrask Forge killing me next turn. Play a land, can play Prowler next, if we're not going to activate the creature land. And then a one mana Marauder seems worthwhile, just to draw a card. And Overwhelming Remorse on top. I could keep it there just so we can answer a Forge token. Although I guess if our opponent top decks Sunfall, then I wouldn't be able to anymore. So yeah, got some options. For now, probably play another Necromace. And then go to Attackers. Finish off Quintorius. This can go face. And pass a turn. I think that's all right. Keep some leftovers in case of Sunfall. And our opponent explodes. All right, awesome. So yeah, even a potentially bad matchup can be winnable, although we did get lucky to dodge the Sunfall, as well as the opponent not having Forge plus Caretaker's talent going, since we don't have a great answer to that engine. So yeah, this Sultai self-mill deck has now definitely leveled up with Bloomboro. has always been sort of a niche strategy in standard with the Urbor Kalurgoif kind of enabling the whole thing and then Somnophage making it better. But now we've got even more tools to really tie everything together. So I think the deck can actually compete reasonably well. In best of three, of course, you will have to watch out for graveyard hate. Not that there are a ton of graveyard strategies incentivizing graveyard hate in the sideboard, but as we saw, the frillback can be extremely effective, excellent our whole graveyard so that can be quite back breaking so yeah that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day